300 miles from Maldives to Chagos, top up with some diesel and head out into the briny. Big surf coming in, but that was about the last we saw of the wind. I'm not saying it was slow, but this mahi mahi passed us. Then we had the first of our night time visitors practicing his high wire on the guardrails and decorating the decks as only the boobies can do. Not sure if this was the same bird, but later on we had another visitor. So your hero, careful not to get his eyes picked out, grabs the bird very gently, gets a hold of the bird, and then strip him off, pluck him, and pop him in the pot with some little carrots, and you have a lovely booby fricassee. No, not really, they're too tough, so we just Chuck him over the side. I hope he can fly. <laughs> Our first sight of Chagos, Salomon Islands. This might be where the skis come from. And while it's always fun to have them on board, you do spend the next two days cleaning off the poop, just as we arrived at Chagos. Anchored in a lovely spot, the people from the British Indian Ocean Territories on their marine biology stuff came to see us, but weren't the least bit interested and just went on with our diving. And so we headed ashore to see what Chagos had to offer. Hold on to your hat, Mrs. And this is Gran of the Jungle. You've heard of George of the Jungle? Well, that was Gran of the Jungle. And that's a jungle. Lots of jungly things in there. She knows. Look, our first coconut crab. Now these little guys, they can grow to one meter from wingtip to wingtip. And apparently they're the largest terrestrial anthropod in the world. And I believe they taste like chicken. And this is an average sized Homo sapien holding a fish he didn't catch. Now you don't come to Chagos for the nightlife, you come for the wildlife and we were surrounded by it. Spinner dolphins, squid all over the place, shoals of fish, boobies, terns, coconut crabs of course and on the list went. The squid would gather in the shade of the boat every day and keep me company while I fought our running battle with weed given our anti-fouling is 
almost dead, in fact totally dead. We grow more grass down there than at home. And of course, no sooner am I in the water than one of our pals appears. These guys would circle around just wondering what was for dinner. Oi! Get off! Here he comes, mooching around. Is Stuart coming into the water to play? Stuart gets the bleeding willies when you're around, so bugger off! Up at the crack of dawn, we'd head ashore for some bird watching. Bird dodging. Yeah. Our second week coincided with spring tides, so we got a marvellous view of the bare reef uncovered for once. Once every month, that is. And this is Anne getting washed out by the tide along with the coconuts. And whoops, she's in an eddy. And now doing her Ursula Andress impersonation. And for folks that haven't seen Dr. No, this is it. And this is a booby sitting on the nest. The nest isn't much, it's just a bunch of twigs. Hello. Hello. Yeah, that's not much of a nest, but it seems to work. Don't panic, don't panic. Next up we headed for Il Bodam, and that was the original settlement for the Chagossians where they made their money processing coconuts in quite an industrial scale by the looks of it. old track lines still run through the jungle where presumably they wheeled their coconuts to the processing plants but not seen much action in a long time these we think are the drying beds for the coconut to be converted into copra. Well, that was our time on Chagos. 
seen the island, seen the graveyard, seen the coconut crabs and everything else. Time to go, heading for a thousand miles on to the Seychelles and sunshine. And hopefully by the time we get there, Covid has all cleared up. Who knows?